What's up you ILS Army and money makers? Welcome back to the channel. ILS shared very important, very juicy and meaty information that I'll be covering in this video. ILS just came and announced their financial earning, their profit and loss statement for Q4 2021 as well as how much that they did in terms of the revenue and what is the assets that they have on hand and total liability as of December 31st, 2021. We'll also take a look into how they performed for the entire year and what was their net income and also how much cash flow that they had from January to December 2021 and how much is the cash that they have on hand. They also confirmed the auditors so we are looking into more reliable and audited numbers very very soon. We have also seen the uptick into the short sell volume or short volume ratio on 31st of uh, March. They announced their profit and loss earning and their financials before a couple of days. So we may see some of the some of the movement in the price point. We also want to talk about what is the price point that you should be looking into. We have seen 18 cents for ILS and, and then it got, got back. We'll talk why this 62.88 uh, short volume ratio is important, what you should be looking into, what is the price trigger, what is the price support, and what price action that you want to see as the support for ILAS. So let's talk about all this juicy, meaty information. Before I go ahead, I just wanted to ask that hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. So as an ILS army, do your part. It doesn't really cost you anything. I put in a lot of time, energy and efforts into building this video and like to share back with the community. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just like you, but I do a ton of research and like to give back to the community. So like, share and subscribe. If you can turn on the notification bell, you'll get notified every single time I post the, the information and which is time sensitive as well. We have been pretty successful in ILS CYBL. We have, done, we have done 10x return in ILS. If you sold at 10x, 51 cent, you should feel yourself lucky because this is another opportunity that you can buy the stock at the right price point, similar to what I do. We have talked about NEO, we have talked about Tesla, earned 40 to 50% return just in a few days and we sold it off. So we have been pretty successful. You want to watch out for the time and the, the, the information because knowledge is power and you want to get the, the knowledge and information when you need the most. So let's talk about it. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. For one day, we are seeing pretty flat. For five days, we are seeing ILS is up 6 to 7% for one month. ILS is down 20% for six months. We are down, cut in half, 53% down for a year to date. We are still down almost 50%. So this could be a good buying opportunity. However, we have seen ILS went to 11 cents. So I wouldn't really jump the gun just yet. Watch out for the right price point that you want to buy. What you want to do if you hold ILAS at 11 to 12 cents, let's watch this video and you decide yourself what you want to do. This is not a financial advice to buy or sell ILAS. I'm merely sharing the information that I came across. Now, one thing that you want to note is ILAS International confirmed the investment project and manufacturing facilities for EV technology in Serbia. Now, what that means is, as you already know, that their strategy is merger and acquisition. They're acquiring companies left and right. They have completed seven acquisitions in 14 months. So they're running one acquisition every two months with that price, uh, with, with, that, uh, with that run rate. And they have also shared that the guidance that they are looking to do three to uh, two to three to four acquisitions every single quarter. So we'll look where it brings them into. And the balance sheet talks a ton about what company did in Q4 and also in entire 2021 in terms of profit and loss. They have started with half a million dollar in revenue in Q1 2021 and they aggressively grew and bought many companies through merger and acquisitions. The company that did not really have any presence in the United States, they got their foot, strong foot into the door and they're expanding pretty substantially. They're also talking about the phase one for the astronomical European deal. However, the company is now proceeding with its first investment project in Serbia that includes the acquisition of merger and manufacturing facilities for EV technology that ILAS has for more facilities for ILAS subsidiary that they're going to further announce down the line in 2022. Over the next eight years, the current investment project is expected to employ thousands of Serbian and generate several hundreds of millions in euro revenue for the city that they're talking about. I don't really want to pronounce this wrong, but the city in Serbia and ILAS for ILAS technology. 
which is undergoing a rapid industrial expansion, aims to become Serbia's leading producer of renewable energy te technology, with Serbia aiming to become the leading European manufacturer and global supplier of innovation sustainable solution. Now, it is right around where Romania is and right around where uh, Ukraine is. And it's part of uh, this European country, which substantially puts them into a very strategic location as ILAS. And I'll tell you why, because they have more presence from some of the bigger companies like BMW, so on and so forth. Now, ILS EV technology in the country is going to sustain and, and, and going to sub be supporting the growth of ILS EV into this particular country with the administration, S Serbian government to create employment opportunity to strengthen the le local economy. The mayor supports ILS EV technology investment project and is optimistic about the benefit that it will bring to the city. Here is what the mayor says. I'm excited for both and proud for this investment project because it is creating thousands of jobs. So it is helping the local economy. In partnership with the Serbian government, ILS EV Technologies begin to manufacture this E-Raptor range of commercial vehicle or E-UTV at large facility in the outskirts of the city. Now, this facility will be the home to end-to-end -end manufacturing process of the company's E-Raptor EUTV range as well as the component parts of the electric vehicle industry. That is going to be substantial and this is four-seater passenger transport vehicle. They, by 2029, the revenue of ILS technology is expected to reach hundreds of millions per year. And at that point, you can expect that they will have bigger spin-off in terms of what they're trying to do because their strategy is to do the spin-off keep 50 to 80% of the stake into each of the spin-off and just get listed, uplisted on NASDAQ and many other exchanges. It could be NYSC as well. ILS is innovative technology manufacturing company as well as excellent geographical position. The site's proximity is both sea and airports for uh, uh, European global export, which is the key factor. Now, what they're going to do with this project, and this is what I was referring to, where they have, where they are right at the moment, they have other manufacturer parts like Audi, BMW, Fox, and Volkswagen. With their investment project, is expected to create 1,000 jobs. After receiving the investment around 60 million euro, their 484,000 square foot manufacturing facility was recently opened at a ceremony attended by Serbia's president as well. The city is investing many more similar projects. It's not just this, but this is one of a kind bigger project. They are attractive. They have attractive um, automotive manufacturing industry with the highly, highly regarded free zones. The country's home to manufacturing like Fiat, Mercedes, um, Ford, so on and so forth. The Fiat employs 2,400 employees within their factory, and you can expect something similar that ILS can bring in at a scale with com in comparison to many other companies that are out there. Now, remember what their CEO said, Nick Link, we are excited to uh, about the commencement of this partnership with Serbian government and forward looking with the city that they're putting the, this project in. Now, we are working closely with the city who are focused or creating employment, growing their local economy through the investment of large-scale manufacturing capability of innovative technologies such as ours. Now, with this final administrative process or procedure being completed, we're pleased to confirm that manufacturing facility for ILS EV technology will begin. Over the last few weeks, the scope of the investment project has grown exponentially. So this is only going to help the revenue and profitability and net income and top line numbers that we are looking into. Having a strong community of more than 70,000 followers, we are getting these updates every single day. Not only that, they also announced before just a couple of days our 2021 filing, including share structure update, that are on track for the submission this week as required. Further updates and or everything further information will be provided on EU first phase shareholder Q&A and first quarter progress. Now, the quarter just ended just before a day. So we expect a ton more information. I'm super excited to learn more about what they are doing in terms of share structure. Now, you want to also understand that this company was a massive, massive, they have a massive amount of shares at the moment, outstanding shares, and also the authorized shares, which is one of a concern. However, the way that they are doing revenue, that can, they can do 10x in terms of their market cap. 
take a look, their market cap was not where we see right now at the moment. We saw that it hit 51 cent just last year. So if you take a look right here, we have seen around November 2021 before three or four months that the stock hit 51 cents. And since then we started seeing the drop and it was not just a drop in ILS, but the overall market as a whole. So you also want to consider that. Now let's talk about what ILS is seeking in terms of their financial guidance that they're giving to their shareholders. Now here's their balance sheet that I wanted to really quickly share with you. It was published on 2nd of April annual report with 2021 R1 that you see right here and reporting and date is December 31st, 2021. So let's get jump, let's get right into it. I wanted to share this information because I was looking myself for the revenue numbers. I was looking for their PL statement, which is profit and loss statement for whoever you're new and you want to pay a close attention. If you're own, if you own ILS, you want to real because many of my viewers bought ILS as five, six, seven cents. We have been covering stocks pretty con this particular stock pretty con continuously starting 2021. And many of us, you like me, might have bought the stock around seven, eight, nine cents, and they've seen tremendous profit. And you might be riding for free at the moment. Who knows? But let's get into this because these numbers look very, very juicy. Now take a look, December 31st, 2021, their cash on hand is 176,000. Now I like to see a little bit more cash, but it's okay. This company is revenue generating company. They have left and right a ton of income and revenue coming in. And once again, don't forget that the company only had half a million dollar in revenue and I'll get into more detail. They have current other assets of 13.7 million, which puts them at the current total asset of 13.9, almost $14 million with the fixed asset of 1.4 million, other assets 16 million. So total asset 13, 31 and a half million dollars with their current liability, 13.5, 13.5 and 13.5 is their total liability. Their equity is $18 million, which shows a very strong, strong balance sheet at the moment. Now, how did they grow? If you want to take a look, 3.7 million that they had in terms of the asset in 2020, which grew to 10x. Take a look, 3.7 million, they went to 31 and a half million. So it's a 10x growth. And this is super, super exciting. This is an OTC stock. So it is not available on every single platform, ticker symbol ILUS if you're new to the stock. But OTC stocks, one of a kind, and they tend to move pretty quickly. And we've seen that in ILS from eight, nine cents, it went to 51 cents and got back down to 16 cents. It's risk versus reward. You can make a ton of money. You can 10X your investment just in a few months. On the flip side, you can lose that as well. So remember, don't invest. That's my strategy. You do whatever you want. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do not keep my entire portfolio in penny stocks, into, into OTC stock. I have five to 7% or maximum 10% into OTC and penny stock, which is really, really high big bats with high risk, high reward. Now let's take a look at the profit and loss statement for 2021 Q4. In Q4 2021, ordinary income 4.7 million, which is substantial. Remember this sales or this income was half a million in Q1. By Q4, they're doing close to $5 million, cost of good, $3 million. This also impact, there is some impact of the inflation, of the supply chain management that is skyrocketing. Uh, also, the sum of the cost that they're incurring due to the challenges that we have because of the pandemic. With that, the gross profit was 1.69, almost 1.7 million, with the expenses of a million zero three. With the net ordinary income, as you see, $659,000, with other income, $284,000, that puts them into $944,000, a little bit shy uh, of a million dollars in net income just in Q4. That's a massive growth in my honest opinion. If I remember correctly, they had 1.9 million ish total income in 2021 up until Q3. Don't quote me on that number because I vaguely remember that. So with that, if you add one more million, you're looking at close to $3 million in profit net income that the company generated in 2021. Now, if you take a look at the entire enter 2021 here's what you can see and you you can also see the ordinary net income that the company is reporting based on some of the additional expenses that they had in q4 so their ordinary sales and income and sales is 11.2 mil 
their total income 11.2 million, cost of goods is 7.4 million, which puts them at the gross profit of 3.7 million with the expense of 2.1 mil. The net ordinary income is 1.6 million compared to the 11 million dollars in scale. With other net income and other income and expenses, 12.3 puts them into the net income bucket of close to 14 million, 13.9 million dollars. Now, if you think about their ratio, profit margin ratio 1.6 million to 11 million that is going to scale up as they grow. Don't forget that they're a merger and acquisition company. They also have some of secured some of the debt that they, that they can use, line of credit that they can use or the money or funding rather I should have said that they can use in further merger and acquisition. Now let's take a look at how much cash that they have on hand which is a little bit worrisome to me but that's not a big problem. They have $176,000 cash at the end of the period ending December 2021. Now, they have also secured some additional funding in 2022. And this is not a concern because it's a cash flowing business. It's an income generating business, but they'll have to make sure that their profitability stays in green, which I'm pretty hopeful the way that they're doing merger and acquisitions, that is going to be the case. Now, if you take a look at the net income, for the entire year, 13.9, once again, 13.9 cash, net cash, 13.1, investment activity, 13.8 million as well, with the financial activity of $885,000. That puts them into net cash increase for the period, $175,000 cash beginning that they had $1,300 that puts them cash at hand of the period for entire 2021, $176,000 when you think about December 2021, this is how much that they had. Now, if you think about the stock price and how they have been doing, you really want to pay a close attention what price point that you're looking into. So let's get into it. If you take a look, their volume was 3.3 million on Friday, which is a lower volume than the average volume of 15 million. If you should take a look into this particular historical price, you are seeing on March 30th, they had 18 cents that dropped down to 15 cents, which is a substantial drop. But at the same time, if you take a look, 5.3 million was the volume. I want to show you the short volume ratio. So 31st of, uh, of March, you are looking at 62.88 million short volume ratio, which means the FINRA volume was 5.3 mil, where they had the short volume of 3.3 million, which is a direct correlation based on my analysis, based on my analysis, do your own. But or based on my analysis, when it was 18 cents, we started seeing a lot of short sellers, which is why the stock went down to 15 cents. So is this a short seller friendly stock? I do want to say, yes, still it is. Now, when the stock price goes at certain level, you will see the short volume ratio spike up. But 16 cent is a pretty good resistance. Take a look, 16 cent tried going back to uh, up, go above, but it could not. Here, 16 cent tried going back up, 1630 could not sustain, got back down to 15 cent. Once again, tried, 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 and got back down. So we are seeing for last one week that it tries to go above 16 cent, but does not sustain. Right here, it started getting some support at 16 cents, if you take a look right here. And it went to 1625, could not really sustain. But what you want to look into is once it can go successfully about 16 cents, the next level you want to see is 18 cents, which was hard for the stock to sustain because it spiked up from 15 cents to all the way to 18 cents, could not sustain from 18 cents, got back down once again, 16 cents, started going back up to 18 cents once again, but we dropped back super hard to 15 cents. So you want to take a look into when the stock can sustain above 16 cents, even better, it can sustain about 18 cents, then 18 cents will work as their support moving forward. But they do have a pretty good resistance to go about 16 and 18 cents as we have seen in last few days. If you take a look at 49 RSI, relative strong strength index looks pretty good to me. I am really, I'm really thinking that this is not an overbought, not an oversold condition that will help the stock move into the positive direction given the financial report that they have. I like to see the moving average. Take a look, the way it rapidly get ramp up and now it is going to sustain around the real-time price point, which is a pretty strong signal that the moving average and the real-time price for the stock is 60, both 16 cents. It is going to get a lot more support and take a look at moving average was 15 cents at the end of uh, March, so 323. 23rd of March, we are seeing 15 cent and below moving average that rapidly went up, went all the way to 16 and a half. 
and right now we are at the 16 cents so it's an improvement of 10 percent so you want to keep that also in mind now 18 cents can it hit once again i certainly believe if there is enough volume given that the strong financials it will hit 18 cents but the problem is the challenge is what the short sellers are going to impact and there could be some significant impacts so watch out for that is this a good swing trade decide yourself because you're looking at 20 30 40 percent return if the things move out in the way especially if the market sustain and remain strong because we're also talking about some of the inflation concern at a global economy level within the united states as well as we're also looking into some of the rate hikes not to say that that will impact the stock adversely but it will impact stock market adversely or stock market will notice that as well so do your own due diligence analysis here i am sharing this meaty, meaty juicy information if you like this video if you enjoy this uh, information hit the like button subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching